a very, very warm welcome from Chemtech to all of you. Thank you for taking the time out to come and join us at the very, very first Epson launch. It's the first from Epson in terms of the V7000 for the uh, flatbed market. But it's not a first for Epson to reproduce vibrant colors and high quality images. It's an exciting time with the new flatbed UV and the application, which I'm gonna talk about a bit. We have 10 colors, CMYK, a dedicated red, light cyan, light magenta, varnish and white, which will really give you a lot of possibilities because the varnish can be used as a spot or a full flat for scratch resistance or anything like that. The print head, it's the known Epson quality that you come to appreciate over time, hopefully. It gives you the quality and the reassurance that your prints will always be the quality that you want them to be. In this case, we have the setup uh, so that varnish and white and color can be printed in one go. Um, and you can also say, okay, I want for, for example, for Persplex, I want the color and then the white to look from, from through the glass. That's also possible. It's just a matter of a setting. It doesn't slow the machine down in any case because it just reverses if the printhead goes back to front or front to back. Print speeds, uh, we can go up to 43 square meters an hour. That is really kind of the higher end speed. We do have different quality modes and you will also see slower, high, very high quality modes for like texts. Um, but I actually have yet to see a sample where we really have to slow the machine very much down. Uh, a good medium quality setting is, as you probably know it from, from the S series, is gives you a very good quality, no need to slow the machine down all the way. I would always advise you to do a bit of a test print if you have something that's a bit more tricky. So see how it works with the very high quality mode, but I think you will afterwards agree with me, a good medium quality mode will be feasible for 90%, 95% of what you're printing. From the print size, two meter 50 by one meter 25. So it gives you really space for large objects, um, but also smaller, and I get to that in a moment with applications. 80 millimeters thickness, so yes, even thicker doors, thicker models can be printed on. The sky's the limit in a bit, and when I talk about applications, I think you will see what I mean with that. Vacuum, you have four zones, so you don't have to have the full vacuum table on. Actually, if you're only using one segment, switch the other three off. You have a very nice suction, no need to tape anything down. It will stay flat and work perfectly. We have on the lower right left hand corner, we have pins, so easy alignment. Um, so you just kind of screw them out slightly, move your um, piece of, of printed material to it. If you have to, if it's very thin, you might have to squeeze them in a bit, but that gives you the alignment that you need. There's also ruler lines. So if you think that works better for me, you have the option to do that. We have an automatic measuring of the thickness, um, you go into a menu, you say, please measure at that and that point. The head goes over, there's a little pin that drops down, and once it connects, it knows the thickness of the material. If you're not 100% sure if the material is always completely even, what I usually do is I measure once in the middle of the material, and then I measure on, on maybe one, maybe even two corners, just to be sure I'm not over the limit um, because that might mean the, the head scratches it or, or even crashes in that. But even that is not a problem because on both sides of the head, you have little swinging guides. If they come into contact with anything, um, they will stop the carriage. It will be a bit of a sound that you think like, oh my God, what have I done? Have I broken anything? No, don't worry about it. It's just the carriage coming to a stop. If, if it's, for example, just really a height, if you don't need to move the material, just increase the height a bit, you can continue printing. And in 95% of the time, you won't even see that it stopped. Um, I had it so often in the beginning where I actually left one of the metal pins a bit too high. And it, it's just learning curve. Um, and yes, I put the pin down, continue printing. We couldn't see where it stopped. So that's how 
accurate the printer is. There is a uh, Yonizizer, I'm hoping that's the correct pronunciation, excuse me, still German. <laughs> um, but it, it kind of takes the electrical charge because that sometimes can be a problem with the UV ink that it doesn't adhere because there's an extra charge. Um, what you can also do is take um, slight alcohol, isopropanol, and just wipe it across the surface before printing. That also takes the electrical charge and uh, guarantees a more even printing. The white ink circulation, because it tends to sediment uh, quicker, we have a circulation and what we, for example, in the German showroom do, we just switch the machine to standby during the night so that all of the circulation and so on goes on. Um, that's what I would advise you and that gives you the perfect quality with the white ink. We have a proximity sensor and I can show you that later on the machine. So if somebody leans in, it will again come to a stop because we want to make sure there's no safety hazards, somebody bumping into the head coming across, somebody getting hit by it. So there are safety sensors for that. Um, ink certification, we're meeting all the requirements, but please keep in mind every UV ink is hazardous. So if you are filling new ink in the back, do wear gloves. Um, it, it's just the name of, of the game with UV. It's not a um, friendly ink to skin. UV printing in itself, um, you can print on almost any material. Most UV ink is either targeted towards flexible or targeted towards rigid material. It's, it's almost impossible to get an ink that can bend but also adhere very well. So the ink that can bend very well, most likely you can peel it off a flat surface. But well, something that adheres to a flat surface very well, sometimes tends to crack when you start bending it. So the scratchability and, and high scratchability and instant curing is the benefits of the UV, but keep that in mind if you're looking at applications. Maybe just run a test. Sometimes you might have to do a bit of a primer very rarely, but it has it can happen. So do a bit of a testing with your customer and the material when you have a new material coming in. The higher you're building the layers, the, the less the adherence, it becomes like the Tower of Pisa. It will eventually be able to scrape it off if it becomes too high of a ink layer. So again, keep that in mind, but you don't actually need that because a normal layer gives you already a very, very good density. Um, if you see it later with the white, the white on one uh, pass, or one, sorry, on one layer has a really, really good density. A varnish has a better resistance to scratch, which is why uh, you can also use it as a flut, um, not just a spot, but a flut, to increase the scratchability. You have samples in your hand, which should all be with flut, um, with flat varnish so you can see how, how well that protects. That's why I said with the um, ink being, this hour ink is more targeted towards the rigid. So you can stretch it um, and there you see the normal colors or have better stretchability, stretchability um, than the varnish because the varnish is meant to keep a higher scratch resistance. There's always a trade-off with ink at one point. Uh, bending, we did testing and it does start to crack after a few times bending, which is why slight bending might be possible, very hard bending 180 degrees, we wouldn't recommend necessarily to, to do that. Again, test it out, maybe there's a material where it adheres perfectly and bends, um, but our recommendation is more for flat surfaces. Punching and cutting, again, it depends a bit on the material, how well it adheres, whether the ink might crack. So if you know you're gonna counter, uh, contour cut, maybe leave a bit of a gap or test the material beforehand. Let's start with signage, the obvious one. Traffic signage uh, in terms of where's the parking lot, where's the company name, uh, backlit signs for, for light cases, magnetics, you know how for the, for the car doors maybe, glass door, you can print a complete glass door up to two meter 50. Any kind of flat advertising material, like any kind of typical what you need for posters where you normally would laminate it on, 
you can print on the board directly. So lenticular needs, because of the, of the uh, lenses, it needs a very precise registration and you can do that with our, our equipment. So the registration is doable for the very precise lenticular boards that you need. Coming a bit to others, and that's maybe where I want to say, don't always think about the size 2 meter 50 by 1 meter 25, I have to fill that. You can use frames. You can do foam boards that you cut smaller holes in there and then put your material in there. So furniture, tabletop, smaller table, anything like that. Again, up to 80 millimeters. Roller blinds, you have the, the different blind systems, but also tiles, smaller tiles, like something like that. If you want to decorate the bathroom, the kitchen, anything like that, the wet, wet rooms, that's doable. And again, you can just place them either all next to each other and print the big picture or have them in frames if you want to have single ones. Name plates. Again, just do a frame, have all your name plates in there, have use only one squadron. It doesn't have to be the full size. That's what I really want you to get away from here. Um, cabinet doors, light switches, the small kind of, if there's anything special that you want to do for a kid's bedroom or anything, uh, any kind of decoration, floorboards, lamination floorboards. Um, tiles, I already said, backboards for the washrooms, packaging, either on a bigger packaging box or the flat ones that you still need to crease and put together, both possibilities there. We had one customer who had about six or seven millimeter blocks. And again, he did a frame and just put the blocks in there and then printed them all in one go. Household appliances, an older um, washing machine, take it off, put it down, print on it, put it back on, make it newer, upcycle things. Yes, it's built for flat. So if you have something that curves, the perfect um, registration, the perfect uh, crispiness will be at that level because if it's something on the curve you have a bit more of a distance it will tend to be slightly fuzzier here but that depends on the picture and on the viewing distance if you even see that so yes if you have very critical text then this distance will have an issue so anything curved would need to have an image that forgives the fuzziness a bit but again something doable I heard yesterday, what about a car bonnet? Well, yes, doable as long as it's less than 80 millimeters. Stationary, all kinds of these small items. Again, think about frames. Don't think about the big space. Um, pens, diaries, highlighters, folders, you name it. I'm hoping I'm starting to trigger a bit of the, oh, wait a second, that's something I could do that I've done so far differently, laminated or anything. Mouse mats, rulers, pencil cases, all of the gift and promotional material. Lighters, fidget spinners, clocks, photo frames, fridge magnets, golf balls. Golf balls fit in. Think about the kind of market you do now, how you do it, and what you can actually move everything to the UV machine. Games, puzzles. Though I have to say with puzzles, the only trick is it's going to be a blank puzzle before you print it, right? So. Whoever gets the job to has all the little pieces and put them together with the blanks, good luck with that. Um, somebody gave me this little bag and went like, okay, so we want to print on that. And I was like, so who puzzles the empty one? Who puzzles the complete white one? You do. I was like, mm-mm. <laughs> might be with the wooden ones for kids, might be a bit nicer if they're bigger, but a thousand pieces of that small, no. Don't do yourself the favor. Find them already flat on a surface before you print. All of the electronic goods. Um, tablet cases, headphones. You can take the side off and put them all in a frame, print them, put them back into the headphones. Um, power, power chip banks and everything like that. Again, as long as it fits size-wise, you can print on it. Travel products. You see, it doesn't stop. It's gone on and on and on. Kind of go like, how many products does she, does she still have? I have a special one at the end, a bit of an odd one, I have to admit. But yes, scales, luggage tags, uh, reading lights, mugs and cups. Yes, again, they're round, 
but it depends on what you're printing on it or if you just want to print uh, the, the vertical line, it's doable. Passport holders, travel wallets, awards and trophies. A lot of the awards and trophies are um, acrylics nowadays. Again, at the moment they're engraved, you can print on them. Make it a nice picture even, like the customer in Germany who did the blocks with the, with the image. All things that I want to start you to start thinking about it. Musical instruments, drumsticks, plectrums, but also just take the front of a speaker, take it off, find something that will work with the vacuum because these ones obviously you need to tape them down because of the holes, you can print on them. A band maybe that they have their, their drum box, anything like that. Um, anything on the sport thing, again the golf balls, uh, frisbees, hockey pucks, boomerang, maybe wrong country for that one, but you get my drift. Start thinking outside of the box, start thinking outside of I have to fill the complete table. And foam board there you cut in the dimensions for your um, for your frames, it's easy to do. And you just kind of have them stacked somewhere and go, okay, it's golf ball time, it's pen time, and just put them on, place everything in there, have a setting in the machine, save it like that, easy. So now comes my, my a bit odd one. Coffins. <laughs> First when I came across it, I was like, that's a bit morbid. And then I thought, well, Yes, but it still happens. So we need them. Um, and then we kind of started talking with two, three people. We're like, okay, so what do you do? Do you do them just a bit more upmarket? Meaning it gets a, a very nice wood finish, which you at the moment would do with laminate. Or maybe somebody wants something personalized. I had yesterday somebody who likes motorbikes. How about a Harley design? Don't just think about us humans, pets. A lot of people want to pet, bury their pets and they want a memory on there, a heart, roses, uh, a photo of the beloved pet. You can print it. It might not be the most fun item to print, but it is a market, it's there. So in terms of markets, there's a whole variety of customers you can talk to. I'm just leaving that out there for you to start thinking and I hope I triggered in, in most of you at least a bit of a, ah, uh, that's a thought. Let me think about that one. So I'm hoping that next time I come back, maybe for Festbor Africa next year, I will see the one or other novelty item that I haven't thought about and learn something from you back. Who have I, who started to thinking about, you don't have to say what it is, obviously, but if you have started a bit, I'm hoping I'll see something in the next year. I see some knots, that's good. That's it from me.